Now let's look into more detail about the alveoli. There's about 700 million of these tiny microscopic air sacs inside your lungs and they are surrounded by this incredible network of blood capillaries. This is where gas exchange actually happens. This is where the gases swap. Okay, it doesn't happen in the bronchi and the bronchioles it only happens at those tiny little alveoli. And it depends on concentration gradients because it's done by diffusion. You need, where there is a high concentration, gases will move to where there is a low concentration. So if there's a high concentration in your, in your alveoli and the gas you've inhaled of oxygen, that will move into the blood where it is in a low concentration. And at the same time, carbon dioxide will move in the opposite direction. So you can see that on this cross-section diagram of an alveolus. We've got the carbon dioxide moving out from an area of high concentration inside the blood to low concentration in the alveolus. And we've got the oxygen moving in to the blood and therefore the blood uh, cells becoming red as it binds with the hemoglobin. Now, alveoli are perfectly adapted for this efficient gas exchange. Number one, they've got a large surface area for diffusion. Number two, they're moist. And when, you're, when it's moist, the gas is diffused in the moisture and it goes even quicker. They've got an amazing blood supply, which uh, helps to maintain this really steep diffusion gradient. So the gases are always moving because the other ones are being taken away. So we can maintain that concentration gradient between a high concentration of one gas and a low concentration somewhere else. And also the walls of the alveoli are very, very thin. They're only made of one cell and that cell is squashed. So it's a very short diffusion distance for the gas to cross um, into the blood or out of the blood. And the walls are also permeable, so they uh, can let the gases through. I need to know about a practical on this, uh, which is to do with investigating the effect of exercise on breathing rate. Now, it may seem quite simple really, and it's quite simple, but it's quite hard to do well this kind of experiment. First of all, what you've got to do is determine your resting breathing rate. Relax, count how many, how many times you inhale in a minute. Do it a few times and take an average to get more reliable data. When you repeat an experiment, it's more reliable. Then you need to calculate your breathing rate when you're um, doing some exercise or straight after exercise. Maybe you jog on the spot for a minute and then count your in-breaths that you inhale uh, for that first minute straight after. Take a minute to rest and repeat it again a few times. Ideally, you want to do this with more than one person, but that's where the experiment becomes harder because you should really control all the variables involved to make it a valid experiment. So you need to think about controlling things like uh, the same time spent exercising, the same type of exercise, the same age or sex of person, the same temperature in the room, the same food and drink they've had before. So lots of things to consider there. Now, I think we probably can all predict the results as you exercise more your breathing rate increases, but you need to be able to explain why in detail using biology. So, when you exercise more, your muscles are doing more respiration. To do more respiration, they want more oxygen. So you need to breathe faster to get more oxygen into your blood, to be carried to the muscles so they can do more aerobic respiration to provide energy for you to move more. So there's a lot of points in there, and that's why it's sometimes a sort of four mark question. The other experiment you need to be able to do is to prove that carbon dioxide is given off in respiration. Now, you can use a really simple piece of apparatus called a huff and puff, where you've got two conical flasks with lime water in. Now, lime water goes milky with carbon dioxide. Now, when you inhale um, through the mouthpiece, you suck air in through that tube and air from the atmosphere is drawn through that first conical flask. Now, there's not much CO2 in the atmosphere, um, so it won't go that cloudy. Um, that first conical flask, but as you breathe out, through it will travel through the second uh, flask, B, and that one's gonna go quite cloudy, or a lot cloudier than A will in the same given time because of the amount of CO2 you're releasing. You can prove that more CO2 is given off when you breathe out using this simple piece of apparatus.